Every opera is based on two subjects, sex and death. And Salome is taking this idea and moves it into another level, another sphere. It's uh, not only about sex and death in the most perverse and clear manifestations, but it's also against the background of religion, fanaticism, faith. And when all those clash together, it's an explosion of humanity. It's fascinating. It's, it's hard to be privy to it, but at the same time, you can't take your eyes off of it. It's a little bit like watching an accident. This is one of the most magnificent scores that I know. This was written originally by Oscar Wilde in 1891, and then uh, Richard Strauss took that great play and made a wonderful opera out of it. The story itself is very, very dark. I mean, this is a story about King Herod, who's obsessed with the stepdaughter, who also happens to be his niece, to the degree that he's moving the earth and the sky to get to her. She, on the other hand, is this young, innocent ingenue who's falling in love with a very dark and ascetic prophet. And she wants the prophet to the degree that she's willing to decapitate his head. I mean, this is a wild, wild story. And, you know, Strauss did not shy from the morbidity of this story. He just took it and enhanced it with his music and storytelling. And there's something really fascinating and captivating about it. And we're at a point uh, as an opera company where we're maturing into being able to do something so complicated and uh, rich. It's not only the story, it's the, everything that is around this opera, from the scenery to the costumes to the large orchestra, that really requires the whole company to rise to the occasion to produce a Salome. So I felt that this is the right time to do this. The style of this production is stripping away historical context or biblical context, because Strauss and Oscar Wilde were not really interested in it. Their interest was telling a story about forbidden love and death, and fascination and obsession with fanaticism, and with power, and with sex, and with love, and with all the things that make us human. And so if you take those themes and subjects and try to put them in a specific time period, it becomes dated. So if you look at the design, uh, at the architecture, at the costumes, at the lighting and the projections, at the action, we are creating a world that is timeless mythology. The Bible to us is not religious in this interpretation. The Bible is a certain mythology and the world is timeless so that you can see different elements that come from different time periods and are not necessarily throwing us into 55 AD or the year 2010. That's not what we're interested in. We want to create a world that will never be dated, that is timeless. What's really fantastic about Salome is that it's an enigma. It's like a poem. An enigma and a poem are open to interpretations that are endless. And that's the beautiful thing about this piece is that you can look at it through the lens of politics, leadership, or you can look at it through the lens of the Me Too movement and how do we interpret it now with everything that has transpired here in the past few years. But the beauty of it is that this masterpiece is always going to be relevant. Coming up with a concept for a new production takes a couple of years. From talking about the concept, to deciding about the cast, to creating the world in which the production exists in. And so this week is very special because two years of plans and dreams are coming together and we suddenly see what the set looks like and how big it is and uh, how the costumes and the lighting and the action are all coming together with the choreography and the storytelling and the music and the orchestra and the voices. It's all coming together magically. And until the last minute, you don't know if it's all going to work out or not. And that's the power and beauty of live theater. <laughs>